Hey, it's Elliot of Farrell's Lead Farm. Uh, just doing a little bug killing. Which I am slaughtering the flies today. Oh my gosh. Anyway, without further ado, uh, I'm going to do a little kind of a control uh, video on all these piston guns here. These are like modern piston guns in no particular order. I got a Tabor X95 and a 556. I got a Scar 16S, same thing, and 556. The SIG's new Virtus MCX Patrol. All right, same 556. This is uh, the older version of the Tabor, uh, IWI, and this is the SAR, got a little different controls, we'll talk about that. And then this is the new uh, CZ Bryn 2S, uh, that's actually in 762 by 39. Uh, Alright, so without wasting much more time, the X95, pretty cool little gun, it's a bolt up, which just means that the magazines go in, in the back here, like so, which is pretty neat, so it ends up being a nice little short package. And it comes with integral sights, iron sights, inside the rail, which is pretty neat. And then it has the more like an AR controls. The magazine release is up front here. And it's got a 90 degree safety uh, to let the bolt go forward. The buttons in the back uh, to release the bolt, which is kind of awkward because then I can't lock it back without having an empty magazine in it that it'll lock on. The uh, other nice thing. About this though is the cocking handle it doesn't reciprocate when I shoot. So good on them. And last but not least, let's check out the trigger. Most bullpup triggers kind of suck, but the X95 is actually okay. Uh, I feel like so. We'll check it out here. So right at seven and a half pounds, not bad. Nice smooth trigger pull and a good reset. So for a bullpup gun. Pretty good. It's got the uh, the AUG beat pretty hands down on that one. All right, the SCAR. So I'm cheating a little bit on this gun. I put a Midwest Industries rail kit on here just because with the factory rail, there's no really good spot to hold on to this. The biggest drawback is the cocking handle reciprocates every time I shoot. Um, but from here on back, this is a really clever gun. It's also, you know, piston operated. It's got a 60 degree throw for the safety, which is kind of neat. And then, you know, your bolt release and your magazine release, which is just kind of like an AR-15. Um, pretty clever. Adjustable stock. Adjusts pretty easy. Cheek piece adjustable. Also comes with iron sights. Uh, you got to do be careful on the front sight since it's attached to the gas block here. This thing gets infinity warm if you're going to go um, play with it. But anyway, French trigger. It's got a pretty okay trigger, I would say. So it maxes out the gauge, so it's somewhere over 8 pounds uh, for the SCAR trigger. Not terrible. It takes regular ass magazines, and it's a decently accurate gun. Uh, Alright, so the SIG MCX here, the Virtus Patrol, this one's uh, M-Lock. I had to put a scope on here just because it doesn't come with any sights with it. Um, retail, it's in line with the uh, X95, so I think retail is about $2,200 on this rifle here. And the uh, X95 is about the same, 21, 2200 bucks. Um, you can pick these up a lot cheaper because they really fell out of favor pretty fast. Um, mostly it's the how you charge the gun is clever because it's like an AR-15, but it really binds up in the back, so it makes it tough to charge. Um, and then to adjust this stock, which you can see how thin that stock is, this is this is probably the worst part of the gun. The front end of the gun, it's awesome. And it's an accurate rifle, but the back end is completely retarded. Um, so it does fold down. If the stock folds down for whatever reason. I don't know why I would ever need uh, a stock to fold. Same as the scar. But the adjustment here is terrible. So you can't really do it with one finger. you got to kind of put your finger in on that button there to adjust the stock. And then I'll shoot this a little bit, but it makes me nervous. This little metal knuckle right here, if you see that, that's steel. And so when I go to shoot it my, uh, on my face here, so if I'm shooting standing, my mouth is right on that knuckle. And if I was shooting prone, you can see here it's like inside my mouth already. So there's no way to get away from that. I have no idea how they claim this can be like a service gun or a combat gun. Um, it's very accurate and it's got decent matters, uh, manners. 
you know, all these piston guns are going to recoil substantially more than a regular AR-15, you know, especially a SCAR. But from here forward, good gun. From here back, terrible gun. Um, so that's the SIG. Oh, and then it's trigger. They put what they call a match light trigger in here. It's not really that awful light. So here it is. It's six and some change. Uh, it's got kind of a, a short reset, but it's pretty gritty. I would say it's you know one, two, three before it kind of goes off. Three little steps. The, the older Tabor, uh, I kind of I like the controls on this a little bit more, just so that if I want to get rid of the magazine, it's pretty fast how I can do it. So I can just pop back on this little button right here, this lever, and the magazine releases, which is cool. So if I take my magazine out, put it in, I can hit that button, it's all right there, and I'm back to shoot. Same thing, I put a little longer rail on this gun, extended, and it also has the same integral sights. So, and that's got an aftermarket trigger from Geisley in it, so we won't weigh that. Uh, Alright, moving on. This is the CZ Bren 2S. Um, it's a super clever gun, a ton of features. It's the lightest out of all of them so far. Uh, weight wise, this is a pistol, so it's a 14 and a half inch. And then I just put the uh, adjustable brace kit on here. You know, I like the safety being ambidextrous. The best improvement is the cocking handle. It doesn't reciprocate when I shoot which is kind of neat. Um, other than that, it has the, its bolt release also in the trigger guard. So I can release the bolt with the paddle here, or I can release the paddle with this little lever inside the trigger guard. I probably won't use that much, but it's kind of a cool feature to have. And it also comes with iron sights, which are really bright iron sights as well, on the rail, so I like it. Out of all of them, this probably has the best manners and the best controls, you know, it feels good. I'm not worried about losing teeth when I shoot it like the uh, SIG there, and it's a fairly accurate gun. This one's actually in 762 by 39. Um, yeah, so I don't know, if I was going to have to rate these guns, and you had to have, you know, one of the new latest greatest piston guns, I would, you know, an AR-15 is going to be more accurate and more comfortable and probably more reliable than any one of these, a good AR-15. Uh, you know, and way cheaper. You can get one for a thousand bucks. But as far as the prices go, you know, this is two thousand dollars. This scar is over three thousand dollars. This is over two thousand uh, dollars. Same with that one. And the CZ Bren comes in just under two thousand bucks. So they're real similar price-wise, except for the scar. Um, anyway, that's about it. I, I guess if I had to have one, it for sure would be that CZ Bren two. The first one was pretty cool, but now that they don't have the reciprocating cocking handle, I would say that's the best gun going. Um, and they're, hopefully the rifles come to market pretty soon, and not just the pistols. And we'll shoot the black off of it and see how it goes. Alrighty. Anyway, we'll do a little shooting here if you want to get on this side. And you'll look this way and you can see how the uh, guns operate and manipulate. So I'm going to hold that while you put your headphones on. Get some good headphones going. Yep. Yuck. All right. So here's the Tabor, the X95. Got the goes. All right. Pretty decent little gun. It's easy to control because most of the weight's in the back on the uh, X95. Alright, so here's the scar. Like I said, pretty comfortable gun from here on back, but if you watch that cocking handle reciprocates, so that gets a little annoying. And then the recoil, it's got a real substantial recoil pulse uh, backwards and forwards because the bolt is so heavy. So we'll shoot this thing. Alright, that muzzle brake helps out a ton <clears throat> having that kind of PWS muzzle brake, but it is a little a little sluggish. But all in all, a good gun. Alright, here's about the most dangerous one to shoot, is the SIG, just because this knuckle here, so this, I'll kind of lean back on it and look like an idiot shooting it, but I'm not about to lose some teeth for some shitty rifle. looks 
like it recoils more, but that's just because I'm not putting any of my face on the stock, so kind of pointless having it. That. We already shot the wood taver. Last but not least, so here's that CZ Bren 2. Now granted, this is in a whole other caliber uh, in 7.62 by 39, but you can still watch the matters, the manners of it, see how it recoils. Uh, like I said, pretty comfortable gun. Super nice that that doesn't reciprocate. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, the more I shoot this gun, the more I kind of like it. Comfortable little thing. So anyway, in review, here's all these cool guns. The best gun is probably this bug assault right here because it does the most damage. Um, but other than that, that CZ's the cat's ass. Uh, and this Tabor X95 is pretty awesome itself. The rest of these guns, they can kind of come and go and I really wouldn't care. That one, I don't know how that gets out the door. That's sick. That is just atrocious. So anyway, there's your little control slash features review on some pretty high dollar piston guns. Uh, moral of the story, probably buy an AR-15. <laughs> you know, a thousand bucks in a gun that's way more accurate and shoots awesome and you can get parts at Walmart for if you needed it. Carry on.